Hello, I'm in Denmark on a very big dairy farm. Very unusual. This cow is a welcome goodbye cow in the Danish flag. And uh, on this side here we have some of the, um, what do you call it, affluent tanks. So we collected in. The, this building is brand new. And it's a new concept of dairy farming. In, in so far, the cows never come outside. All their lives, they live in here. And there's hundreds of them. Literally hundreds. I will just go through. There's nobody here. I could ask if I could film or not. But um, I've been assured by my host, it's okay. Um, I just put my camera a bit on longer distances. This is just so big that um, I haven't any intention of counting the cows. There's a machine that travel around like a little train on top. And it's carrying, it's carrying cut straw along for the cows to sleep in. Out here in the, where the tractors go down and spread out the, a mixture between straw, silos and crushed grain and various other chemicals. And uh, there is never any water in this uh, outfit. No water. Automatic cleaning of any manure and things. And uh, I'm impressed as so why the cow seems to pretend they're happy. They don't have to walk for miles on, on the races. And um, all they do, they are, you know, you record, record um, yields per cow. And they all have numbers and things, and they uh, don't battle or fight with So They're not tied up. They can take their heads in if they want to, or go back to sleeping these beds at the back. You just see there's one on the back that's lying for two or three four in there. More on the other side. So they're having a rest this afternoon. Um, now the bedding machine comes back and uh, and it goes back to this automatic this is programmed. It runs like a, a model train on these rails. Remembering how far it got Get a new load, take off again, and spread the straw out. I assume that's a computer for it, I'm not sure. Anyway, these are the things that, that what we call pressing the cows. It's, it's an automatic boom, a brush. If they go near enough to it and try to sing the start, and they can get brushed themselves, as long as they like, as much as they like. And uh, this cow seems to enjoy it knowing. So, get some water and a brush, good feet, and then the sleep. But they cannot complain. This is good. And the windows are open, or oh, the walls, as the curtains can be drawn and asked all up controlled by um, well, for instruments that detect the weather, like wind and rain and temperature. So we walk down here through the whole lot, cows and cows and the end of it. We see the milking thing, which is extremely unique. And later we will visit another stable, which is somewhat different, but also impressive. The other one's different because they come out once a day on a fast paddock to feed. The milking of the cows are continuous. The cows does it by themselves, not the farmer. And this is a new turn in technology, dairy farming. See that there is one, two, three, four, five cows here waiting. The others are full. And they can open the gate into the milking room themselves. We'll now go inside and see what that looks like. This is the milking room, De Laval, it's a known name. And one cow had walked in with this trap. It's a, it's a robot milker. Now 
I don't know if you can see the ear mark on the cow, that 0442. You just got to be careful on this arm that you don't be. Yeah. How, how it goes. Yeah. Just have a, I think, realizing the cow left. The next cow will now be able to open the door inside the way and the weight comes in that's the cups it was It appears that, that um, it washes the other first, just with one, one cup, very thoroughly impressive. Now something in this way that this probably here, you can see it. Cow number 4073 is now accepted by the computer, and you will let us see how much milk it gets. And this is all computerized. Next cows are getting impatient. Just can't wait to put them there. So that was the first thing by the computer. Now we will find by light sensors each pit one at a time. Exactly, spot on. And my winking had begun. There, no misses. And then I was a fourth one. There, exactly. He's already up at four uh, kilos uh, now. He hardly got the, the, the cups on. Five kilos, six kilos, seven kilos. This is the fast. Eight kilos. Total yield 10 kilo. No, no, this is not correct. 1.3 kilo, 1.4 kilo. I was counting the ones, so 1.6 kilo. Yeah, it sounded incredibly. So it's now 2 kilos, 2.1. Even that is fast. Excuse my mistake before. But nevertheless, the whole thing is full of flies as well. That's, that's the only thing they haven't changed with modern computerized. Robot times the flies are still here in mass. Now, we'll see any other surprises, but that, that is impressive. We have not seen any people in this enormous giant dairy thing so far, except my host and me. We went on and took the film without asking, there was nobody to ask. Everything goes automatically in this place. Alpha Laval. And another car waiting. Non-stop. I think I think it's probably almost 24 hours a day. This goes on. And the cows are happy. We take a something I forgot to mention is um, the technology goes a little further than I have um, anticipated. There's a little white pad there, they get sterilizing the equipment, the computer wipes the things there. But 
if a car is in heat, uh, a slightly higher temperature, the, the machine detects that. And uh, if there's one tit is infested with some sickness, the computer uh, detects that too. How about that? We're now up on 13 kilos, 13.1, reading between the flies and see if I can get it a little closer. Yeah, yeah. That's 30.5 kilos. Yeah. The cup comes up. One cup came up. And the next one. No more comes out. That is a patience of the robot. Of the robot, as you say. Cows waiting, probably their patients have gone up as well. And now the computer is ready to finish off the last bit of the work. Comes in, follows the cable along. Let's see if we can find a short distance here, there it is. Nothing was dropped into the hood. Sure. Last one. Okay. You're ready. No more there. And a wash. Go. You see, the bike now. The other end, and this gate opens. And within, I think about a quarter of a second, the next was thin. He got his head in first. There, go. And a new number appears. The, the computer reads the cow's earmark and puts it on the screen here in the middle. Of it. A new washing the wings. This is cow number 1883. And it's now being washed and accepted for, for um, past the test of being in heat and a bit. So, we'll go and have a look at the rest of it. One thing I haven't worked out, we outside the computer room again, or the robot room rather, how the cows get here from all over the building. There must be some, some way they can find their way here, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, there's maybe seven waiting. So the robot is not going to run out of work just yet. Okay, maybe I can find the answer to that, how they get here. There's a passage to here and up to there. Here yeah, maybe. Well, anyway, let's look at the rest in the meantime. Some of them got great marks on, on their back. Whatever that he didn't care, that's rated on the gate, it meant something or another. Yeah, there's more here. Maybe those, the way in heat, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, what else of interest apart from its absolute enormity, ventilation, and uh, yeah. Plenty of cows. I think we should have a look outside on the silence arrangements. As they are not outside at all in these farms, there's no need for races and gates and dogs and, and quads or anything else. <coughs> and you see the farmer can occupy himself with in between uh, meals. Just, he's not even here. Nobody here. Just cows. Loads of them. Miles and, and the radio going, that's about all. And outside, the sun is shining. There's another comfort thing going over there. There's a few of them around.
and the cow enjoys it. You as a friend. Go and have a brush with your friend. So the mixing tank or tractor trailer so it goes in, loaded up and mixing everything together and lies it in a lie outside. It's, I think the rules are at the end of the day, if there's a little bit left, then I had enough. If, 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 you could call it a race, I suppose. It's empty. They haven't got enough, so they need more. A little four-wheeler thing goes along and washes it in a bit further what they can't reach. But the mixture is such. Uh, they, they eat everything, mixed up straw, uh, corn and grain, chemicals they might need. Here's some of the secrets. I hope the wind is not too hard on the microphone. But there's miles and miles of, um, what do you call it? Yeah, corn outside, everywhere. That had replaced the paddocks. And uh, this get ground down together. They buy the bales from the barley farms and mix into it. And like, uh, and, and high, there is cut and half dried and they made into Violets, but not in violets. This Silas pit, if you will call it, consists of elements set up vertically like a big wall, and there's plenty of them, there's plenty of bias. And the violets, the hay, the straw, and the corn chopped up get put in here, and top tires cut down to the flat are put on top to put some weight on, they can be sterilized. And on the side, look on the side, plastic going down, folded over, and underneath plastic, a completely enveloped airproof, 100%. And more tires here should have been needed. We're back in the stable to pick up something we forgot here and there. Good, bad, or indifferent. This cow needs to be milked. He's running out just by laying down some white powder on the sleeping by, which apparently I've explained is some disinfectant. Uh, another thing I've been informed about, there are six robots in this outfit, not just the one we looked at. That explains some of the questions as to how they could get there all at once. However, it doesn't seem to be quite enough because there was a queue with the robot we were looking at. However, the milking, combined milking time in a 24 hours is now 17 hours continuous milking. They hope to get up to 22, but not yet. There seems to be room for a few more cows. So yes, there we see. There's one robot, there's another robot station, and we have two on this side, two on this side, two. I need, didn't understand that before. We only looked at one. Now it dawns on me. This is much bigger than I thought it was. So there's a queue on this side as well and on the other side. And look, what we know, a queue again. That is milking. Now, yeah, look in there, like a hairdresser saloon. Just to find a word for it. Tit cuts flying about in all directions. Now, that was four, and yeah, there's another two down here somewhere. Else. And uh, yes, that's impressive. Yeah. A, a last look on, at the heart of the outfit. Uh, the young man here explains to me that nothing can happen with the Milton process. The computer show when I accepted when I finished and what they gave that day, what, what air tag it had. They all there instantly as it goes through. It changes like a flight plan in the air, um, airport. The last look at the stainless tank is quite high. We are in a Silas pit where it's being used of. It had apparently rained, rained all night, 
but the flow is such that it runs off and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It smells quite, quite uh, nice, a bit, uh, what do you call sour smell perhaps, but, but certainly not rotten. There are no sparrows or flies here, nil. You can see up on the wall where it comes off. The wall is clean. So, that works that part of it. Outside the silence pits there's a crate in the, in the ground, in the concrete ground here. And uh, so there's no possibility ever that water can splash about or the tires on the tractors get dirty. Never. So in here is a huge straw bales from the harvest which they buy up and get chopped up and mixed in with it. Uh, with everything else. Nothing is happening just now. Yeah, there is one mixing mixing truck. And it can all be controlled. See the the drive shaft between the tractor and the truck and it gets completely granulated or mixed up and then spread out at a certain rate, maybe one kilometer or two kilometers an hour inside the the cow house. I mean, a good word for a cow house. And here is some of the chemicals which mixed in. Chop a few sacks of them. Each one, I don't know, 25 kilo nits of calcium and natrium carbonate and hydrocorks. Uh, so, we might run out of things to see, but we did meet one guy by the computer, but he was busy getting a copy cover so he didn't have time to talk. What a life for a dairy farm today. It's only the dogs following us about, taking any interest. Yeah, the, the cows. This is the old farm. Look at that. It hasn't become totally useless yet. The old farm, in fact, has some use with automatic drinking cups and whatever they have. And a hand tool. Oh, well, I never. And look at that. Recognize that sort of thing from New Zealand. Yeah. And the dogs. Okay, and the birds in here. The bird needs swallows in here. They flap about and catching flies by the millions. More calves. So, recognize something about normal farming. Anyway, tomorrow we'll have a look at another farm, but with a difference in so far that they get out doing it. So, goodbye for this session. Just have a look in the private garden. How a day farmer cuts a tree down. He has absolutely no idea how to do that. Look at that. Once a day farmer, always. A forest worker would never do it like that. Yes, yeah, so I'll be today. <coughs> Here, day after, I'll be picking for. Well, a, a bit of. I better speak English. <laughs> I mean, Denmark again. Uh, the day after, we were in a robot um, um, cow shed. And this is now a bit more traditional. It, it is still uh, uh, quite impressive. About uh, 200 cows, one man operation. And um, what it is, it's a pit where he goes in, and the cow stands um, there coming in, in in banks of about, I think, 10 or so. And uh, alternatively, um, this, this one server here seems to be finished and he's pushing this not, not lot on. There's something else <coughs> which I now have learned since yesterday, <coughs> which, which is uh, the robot milking. There's one there that seems to be singled out. Milk doesn't come in. I don't know why, but anyway, possibility there, they can be milked separately. <coughs> um, <coughs> what I didn't know about the robots yesterday, they, uh, a lot more complicated and in, uh, intensive than I <coughs> first thought. The robots are able to detect uh, where we were yesterday a 
if a cow does not come in uh, often enough to be milked, I think the maximum allowed by the robot is uh, three times in 24 hours. And if it doesn't happen, the cow doesn't come, the, <coughs> a beep on the, what do you call it, whoever has watched on his cell phone indicates there's something wrong and he has to go and read what it is, that cow number so and so haven't shown up. <coughs> or alternatively, if um, somebody, some cow falls in love with the computer, co com comes too often, in which case the gate opens again and the cow is rejected until sufficient time has passed. Um, I didn't know about that yesterday, but that is probably only the beginning of the programming of this machinery. We also talked about the economy of, of, of robots in um, that there is no more any labor involved, but maintenance of the robots is indeed not only very special, but also expensive. I, I'm not sure what sort of maintenance there is, but um, <clears throat> of course, the cow standing waiting has to be quite instant in any case. We'll now go and see. The cow is in the back there, you just mentioned that. They are a movable fence behind them, which, will, with a handset like um, starting a television, can be pushed up and force another 10 in to one or another side when another lot is released. Um, this one here is now almost ready to be released. I think there's only one set of cups and not quite, not, no, there's two there. They release themselves and uh, a spring arrangement holds them up again. Um, now, the, the yield of these cows here done by human attention is about um, uh, 850 to, to 900 kilos more in average per cow. Now we're talking about hundreds of cows, so the average is <coughs> not too inaccurate a measurement as if it was a, only a smaller herd. Um, why that is, I'm not sure, but one thing, one thing I can think of is that they all have to go through this lot twice a day. They don't choose themselves. Um, now, <coughs> okay. Uh, <coughs> so, if that is a correct interpretation of that, of that uh, peculiarity, I'm not sure. Um, but that <coughs> the other one was about 980. Was it nine tons, 800 kilos? Per cow with 4% of fat, and, 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 and this one here lying on 900 and something <coughs> ton, no, sorry, 9, nine point something ton per cow. This, this in itself is fantastic. It could not be, be achieved if a cow has to, to sleep outside and wait on a cold and, and walk on a, on a race with sore feet for more than a kilometer twice a day. That, of course, takes energy. And the cow, cow has to keep warm. As compared to the, um, imagine the other one, 450 cows in one building. They, they can easily keep warm even in, in the frost outside. And uh, they got rice balls to sleep in. And the boss, and so now, that must disappear. And they are expelled. The wild geysers till there's not one left in there. And by what the farmers by his handset and 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 the pins behind comes up and pushes it and pushes them in. Well not by force but well. Uh, there's a lot less space, and in they come, and one by one, come right to the end, they get their others clean. And this, this I'll just go into detail about this little towel he got there. They are sterilized towels. Uh, it means two buckets here. There's one load, and these are the used ones, and the other ones, what have we got left? Not very many now, it's past 7 o'clock in the morning, nearly finished milking. And each loads of towels, 200 on, get straight in the washing machine twice a day.
one town are not used to twice. So we'll now go and have a look at a few other aspects. The, the lift manager. See that? And it's a cooling thing. And uh, the cooling, what it says, centigrades. Where is it? There. Um, I'm not sure what that means. But the cooling output and so on. It says 50, no, 5.2 centigrade. Um, so, what that means is this big container here, which is halfway buried into the next room, uh, whereas, yeah, this is, this is some, some of it here, uh, and further things. <coughs> Uh, it, mean, it means, in effect, the warm milk comes from the cows. Nobody has a possibility of putting that on his breakfast anymore. When it leaves the, the, the tits or uh, milk machine, it goes straight to the cooling system. And you can only get cold milk in this outfit, not warm. So you have to warm it for your breakfast. Um, <clears throat> even, the cow, even the calves will have to, to get, get cold. However, on the other side here is a hand basin with hot and cold water. And would you know, the cooling machine extracts heat from the milk and put it into a hot water cylinder. They get very hot water here. Um, as, how can you put it, as it happens by coincidence. We're back in outside the milk arrangement now and in the cow sheds as such. And on this side here are the milking cows. On the other side, the dry and the calving cows, or the expected calves, and uh, the young ones. Uh, further back this way is the calves, all in one building. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen before. But there's a lot of, I can see, young yearlings outside. Um, they, of course, are stay out there here in the summertime. However, <clears throat> um, this, this difference between what we saw yesterday with all inside, uh, all the cows' total life inside, or well, these ones here that come out, um, <clears throat> they milk twice a day, but the rest of the time they're out in, in quite uh, large paddocks, a couple of hundred acres, I think, divided into different paddocks. They still have here um, bedding where they lie down, as they please, and there is a few cows up there lying down to start the milking. Um, <clears throat> they'll be finished milking in a, in a few minutes, and the whole lot will go out again. And it, 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 it seems to have an effect of, of the economy, the cows can do that. If that could in fact could be transplanted and practiced to New Zealand, I'm not sure. But there's things like we have winter here with snow, and also things can get too muddy if it's too much rain, like in New Zealand. Um, I think some dramatic modification one way or another to transplant sort of these systems. Would you see one of the cows there having a, a good boss? They love it. A bit better picture than we had yesterday. And they're really working over all over. And it, the machine doesn't stop before the cow stops applying a pressure to it. And it doesn't seem to be in a mood to do that just yet. So going backwards and forwards, right up onto the ears. And uh, um, now, give it another. This thing stopped. Now it's another, give it a cold shoulder and up it goes again. So, right down over the other side. Uh, they love this thing. Good, eh? They're having a little feed here before they go, go out again. And this is something I like to go into in a bit more detail, which I think will be very difficult to 
transplant the system to New Zealand conditions, and that is the straw. The straw is part of the diet, and they've got a huge stack there. They, they buy them from ba barley farmers, which in past years have burned them, burned them on the field. Now it's become a valu valuable further, not because you've got much value in it, but certainly because to have this fiber mixed into what would otherwise be uh, almost silos or bilers, which would be far too one-sided for something which becomes a, a factory unit each cow is. And therefore, um, I think it's well known, uh, if a cow go purely on clover and things uh, get, can easily get far too much and one-sided that way. But when you have them inside, in particular where they stay inside all the time, straw suddenly become a necessity to mix in. I'm not sure the percentage, but certainly both here and, and in the farm yesterday, there was huge stacks of straw. Um, the mixing machine here again. And we might just have another look at what else he puts in it. Um, here we are. This here is small uh, pillars of biscuits from compressing olive oil or uh, that sort of thing in this case from a plant called Ray. This here is barley which they have harvested themselves and the machine over here crushes it into a type of, of uh, well you could probably call it a mixture of oats. It, it, is, it is mixed. It makes a heck of a racket and it's filled in with a front end loader there and uh, then through the machinery it comes out and drops into a, a little heap here which then can be picked up again with the front end loader and put into the mixing machine here. This is all inside work so there's no mud on the tires. Uh, this is just an absolute no-no to run in on this concrete floor from outside with any dirt and mud. Um, remember, there is no water and washing down in these buildings. To have that, you will start a, a composting or rotting process uh, of the whole thing. And to keep it dry is ne necessary, otherwise this system could not work. Again, our little dog that followed me everywhere and loved to be petted, standing next to. Um, no, need a bit more distance here. Um, three lots of various uh, things that get mixed in to the mixer, and that's handy just when the when the mixing machine uh, goes by to grab a bag of each and, and empty into it chuck the empty bags aside. Not many seconds wasted on getting that lot right. It comes on pallets and put here. So not a lot of labor for receiving and storing that, these things. And uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not really going to what the various things is, but it appears to be necessary and the same. Here comes now our dear bedding machine. And have a look, can you see there in the background, these are empty spaces and it has heaped up um, because there's nobody there to use it up, even up, up there is, is even more. But we will see it comes down to its filling station. This is extremely interesting because it took a lot of, of the farmhands time to run about with a little trolley and put a for full of straw into each cow bed. This machine here goes like a model train and it comes now into the filling station, which is a, we call it a mini um, thing. Let's just have a look. It stops. Now in there, it goes a little bit. Now, yeah. So a new load of straw will now be put up and fill it up, and when the sensor decides <coughs> we've got another, another trip. <coughs> this, 
this is also computer programming. And uh, a lot more extensive than I thought it would. There's an overhead rail system with various branches into various runs. And there is a, indeed a few of them. I think um, only, yeah, only one right on this side and two on the other side. So there is a little exchange system, exchange station there where it can uh, pass or, or to the second one or go up to this one. But not only that, the, the, this long run, the odds are the little trolley train there runs out before it reaches the other end. And then it stops remembering how far it got, come back, get another load and go out and finish the job. That <coughs> is all computerized. So, I, I don't know how long it will take, but uh, we will see it take off again and start. Um, there's nothing like for a cow to come in lying on dry, uh, mutilated straw, because it's not soft. You couldn't have a cow to, to, to sleep on a stiff straw bed, so they just have to be, um, what do you call it, crossed first. Now it's full. And of course the train again. We will now follow it, follow it on its journey. It's not letting anything out at the moment. It now enters the first bed. Well, it could be it wasting it from there. Let's have a look. No. Maybe being told not to put any more there. I will follow it down. Wait. There's nothing left in the bay there with the watering trough. So maybe it shuts off when it passes that, and it's still going on. We can see there where they have been not being used, and there's plenty lying there. That can be utilized later, I, I suppose. Apparently, the cows do not eat this. Um, they've been through, they do have, they do get a mixture of straw out here. These are the young ones, they're not too force fit. Let's see now, will he start here? No, not yet. He hasn't started yet, but he turns around and go away to the far end. We're now in where the cow is ready to cut. He's waiting, through lying on the other side. Now, It works. Get a good dose in there. Eat bit. Another cow gets uh, lying there. If I was a farmer, I, I just couldn't sleep safely at night unless I was absolutely sure that each cow had a dry, clean bed to sleep in. Well, and you even enjoy the view from behind from the old farms. This is one thing about the traditional farming, that when you build such huge mega size cow sheds, all the old buildings become empty and abandoned, filled with rubbish, anything. And um, so, um, there's a change. This, this cow set here uh, is now two years old. The one we saw yesterday, computer uh, and robot uh, things, was only one year old. So uh, <coughs> it seemed to be a big development, but the discussion of the economy about it and the yield per cow and any other considerations, loss of contact with animals where there's absolutely nobody around to where the cows see human beings occasionally. There is many things. Um, but otherwise, people protest. But I really haven't got a good argument. You, you cannot really compare this to battery hens. Not by a long way. These cows are content and happy. 
much better than if they were out. So um, anybody protesting will have to think hard uh, what to say. This little bedding train disappearing in the distance. Apparently it had to go right down here to come up the other side. But it just does as it told, it's empty. And okay. Yeah, it reverses now. Going back backwards right up again to pick up another load. Yeah. But we're just used to to realize how big this really is. It's not that close. But, uh, there's a long way over there to the other side. And so, so it is um, to the other side, where the other rails we would go later. Now the milk is finished, and we might just be able to see some of the cleaning process on the other side. I'll see if I can zoom in on it. There, in the background. Go away now, let's have a look. Can I see it behind there? No, I think it's finished now. We missed that. Uh, it is uh, a, a, a scoop that runs down the floor and put the whole thing into underground, um, underground um, channels pumping it out into effluent tanks. The effluent Huge tanks outside, enormous. And they are needed now in this new type of farming, in particular where they're going out uh, inside all year. And the reason for that is um, you need to harvest the clover and the hay and mix it with, with the corn and straw to make this acceptable um, fodder. And to make it silence is no longer viable to have a contractor in. It, it needs to be done uh, a lot more often and with smaller tractors so that you do not um, compact the whole paddock totally. And it becomes a full-time job making silence all, or in, uh, all summer and having various buys so there's always one filling and when it's one empty be filled again. Therefore, when something is harvested, you can put the, uh, the affluent, effluent on it immediately from big uh, tankers and having watering systems and harvest uh, clover and high and grass from the other side again s uh, five or six weeks later. All summer, this can be practiced and ensuring you will have enough for an otherwise far too big heard for such a piece of land. The washing machine, washing the towels and uh, spinning and drying them. There's a little bit of water being used to clean the milking cups. And the last lot of cows leave. Now <clears throat> the cows are waiting here, patiently to be let out. I noticed the curtains are partly drawn in the windy side, and. Uh, not in the other side. This is also done automatically. Uh, go down and see what's happening here. See some movement of cows. As they leave, they don't have to be coast. They certainly like to get out. There could be no doubt about that. 
uh, cows are um, headed animals. And that's what happened with the robots. When you get, we just took a little bit about that when we were watching this, that um, these habits of a cow, certainly when, uh, suddenly, when the robots uh, uh, outfit are ready for getting, getting operation, and all the cows are put in there, 450 of them in this, in the, where we were yesterday, uh, of course, this is an enormous shock for the cows. Suddenly, everything is different. No cow has a uh, right to come first. They eat can go when they feel like it. There's no certain times of the day anymore. And um, uh, each time the computer senses a cow number has not been registered for a period of time, a beep goes on that. Um, uh, what do you call it? Helper's cell phone, and you've got to go and find out what's wrong and find the cow that had not been there to be milked and uh, herd it back into the computer. It could take months before the whole before, before the whole herd gets trained. And indeed, I heard some cows will absolutely never give up their old habits and have to be taken out of the herd again. Uh, so there is a, uh, what do you call it, getting used to a period for that sort of operation. But as a very new one, new thing, only a year old, it appears now that things are falling into place slowly. As you saw yesterday, we could not, coming from outside and not, not knowing anything about it, we could not see that there was literally a queue outside each computer for cows waiting to be milked. Um, the cows here now going out. There, there is no quads, dogs, and um, chasing them about here. They just walk out themselves. The paddock is right outside the door, and they can go in two or three different directions as as the grass grows. Um, and they will be waiting outside here again in the afternoon. Bye. When um, Everything is finished. Uh, the, the farmer had been chasing the cows out. Of course, there are some some manure things there, and in each side there's a pipe with a with a hose in it, and the gumboots are cleaned before it comes back out here. There's a number of these pipes. I've seen them. So we are finished here in the morning. Some of these cows here, they have been put aside, sold out. Either they are close to calving, or they are going to put, be put on a diet. Uh, so they go off milking, uh, what do you call it, dried off, I think the term is. But they don't like it. They are moving. They want to come up with the rest. Yeah. And they saw them go out, they want to come. So they have some feelings. The farmer now is going to do a bit of a clean up. Starting this little thing we got there. And uh, there's a bit of heat, heat um, cleaning up, done with a, a quite impressive machinery. And um, 
two, two big fish come and, and do that. Of course, everything possible you can think of. Not a problem. And the other person cleans up. Uh, more cows waiting in a little cage and a few more there. All of them have had some foot problems. Yes, you can just see it there. It's, um, not good enough to fit. Do the front leg and now the other back leg. Have a look. And, and the to me, the shoe looks like a um, cutting, a cutting side by side by side. It's kind of like the cow is all that heavy about. This cotton manicure. Um, and a little bit of bishop disinfecting. On a completely new footing. All the Gains and things and totally unable to move. Next one come in for this new experience. When it goes far enough, the head is locked in, the change goes up, the weight takes off it, and For it, if the cow can't stand up uh, or is not really completely comfortable, uh, a bit of a grind will make a lot of difference. And um, I think it's I think it's a good idea that it is locked up like that. It could well be a few kicks flying about otherwise. One front leg here is tied up. In the hydraulic lock, of course, there's uh, no time to the cow, it's just empty. Yeah? And um, we have a rise of the things to be applied. what happened there was special treatment for that foot. This is, could be interesting. Oh, you get a shoe put on with glue. A cow shoe. How, how, how delicate. <laughs> That's why it was heated up first. Well, I never.
I've been told it's a lot cheaper have this done than not doing it, as far as the production is concerned. Mm. Now back to the operation. The reason that cow we saw just got, got a, a shoe on, uh, on just one side, I've been explained to me, was the other half of the foot was sore, there was something wrong with it. So they put this, glued this plastic shoe onto the healthy half. So the, other, the sore bit got a rest as long as that thing would last. Um, so that was then cunning way of overcoming that problem. The helper, um, with this food manicure, um, keep up releasing and tying up hoof and the cow in this case. Um, not content, not have to put up with it. But all you can do anyway. I have a look at, at the rest of the machinery. It looks like we're sending out, it's got it's done about four cows. And they three to go. It's only those that have been sorted out, they most in need. No, four to go yet. Okay. Now the rest of it, this is. The mid Midwest cow, um, what do you call it? Cow cure with the two cows on it. Special wagon. The speciality. We'll just have a look at that part of it. Um, that is looking at it here. I have to get some distance now. That inside the cow shed, we have enough space here in these such, such big buildings. The whole cow hospital is unloaded into where the cows are. And with, with a high up of some sort. Yeah. And of course they have to put supports down to do that and inside the transporter there's another mobile case so they can actually operate in the field as well which is of course not necessary here so apart from being a veterinarian of some kind with various um, Situations to cope with, right from infections, putting shoes on, cutting them off. We look at the heart of that thing with hoses in all directions. It is indeed impressive. Uh, yes, it is, it, is, it is cut into 230 volt. So that is one thing that is necessary wherever they are. Um, now, um, we see some uh, power fly here. This is the thing that power is not all heavy about it. But Anyway, now the whole machine is, um, I've got a high app on it, which um, can actually, it looks like, be able to load and unload this without getting involved in the fluorescent light. There's space here. And uh, it's unloaded into where the cows uh, are. Uh, so, and have, have you taken to it? <clears throat> um, specialized truck just doing that, and it has this uh, cow uh, thing put on it. 
this here, the, the heart of the machine, the cow doesn't waste any time coming out, and uh, a bit careful on the street, a bit new now, this one comes in, this put his head through and that is uh, not put out heavy on the whole new experience and lift it up just to take the weight of the car of the me and the feet up grinding away with a little bit this is the heart of the machine and we must hold this in all directions actually uh, on 230 volts, electric motor runs the hydraulic pump. That is the cow is not particularly happy about it going. Without being tied up, there might be a, a few kicks as well. But not much they can do about it. Another little treatment. So, some bandit supply. That's it. like a gate. Next please. Just seen how uh, one side there was a double coat of a hoof and it being cut out, bleeding, bled, ble bleeding badly, and uh, uh, the double coat of the hoof in one side was simply removed. Now a, a shoe to be put on the healthy half, and now of course. A bandage is going to be applied where the bit was cut out. And uh, I've been told that the new coat will probably, with a bit of luck, uh, go out to a normal normal hoof instead of a double one. It's not a normal case. But it's cured here and then on the spot. Now the rest of the repair will take place. The new shoes being 
in place and glued on. <laughs> yeah. Heat and glue. Yeah, and um, the one that had been carved out. See if you can maybe see it even closer. Most of these cows actually don't go very far, but even that they can't stand up and, and support themselves upon one foot is, is not good. So a lot of effort and expenses spent on foot care. Bit of a two man job. See how the cow will walk on that lot. Walking on it, probably even better than it was before. Just a few minutes ago, I just did and support itself. Nice. The operation is finished, and uh, from apparently what I can see, a tank uh, inside the truck. The whole thing is washed down. And, uh, the high pressure, the thing turns around, and the case the cows come in is, 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 is part of it, which is now is called a set and hinged onto the to the unit either side.
the whole mobile car hospital. It's no defective there. Last your tools clean. Even the hose they have been in there has to be cleaned as it's called in by the wheel.